This video is brought to you with support from my patrons on Patreon. Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital, and today we are designing and printing a new in-scale building, and I'm going to give you some tips and tricks that I have learned over the past two years of 3D printing. Welcome back everybody. Today I'm going to be designing and printing a, another in-scale building and I'm going to be doing it using a resin printer. And what I wanted to do today was rather than just doing what I typically do, which is design it in a sped up way because they do take a while to design hitting the highlights and then printing it and voila, it's a building. What I wanted to do today is basically I've been printing uh, buildings for well over a year and a half now with uh, resin 3D printers with my Anycubic Photons and my LED Mars and there's been a few others thrown in there that didn't work out that well, but I won't mention them. And what I want to do is take some of the tips and tricks that I have learned through my print failures, through detailing failures, through things that make it more difficult, things that I've learned. I want to take some of the most, like, these are tips that are guaranteed to help you out in terms of print successes, in terms of print detailing. So I want to take those tips and put it to you in a format of how I design a building now. So we're going to be designing another municipal building. We're going to be designing an in-scale fire station to print on the Elgu Mars 2, which is a resin 3D printer, which I actually did a review on. That's linked right up here, as well as in the description below. So let's get started. Today we're going to be designing an in-scale fire station. As usual, I start with Google for some inspiration. I hop into Tinkercad and the first thing I do is make a flat surface the size of the build plate of the printer. My first tip is to try not to max out the build plate. You're more likely to run into errors at the edges of the screen rather than more towards the middle. I take the solid shape and I hollow out the middle of it, which leads to my second tip. Make the walls thick. Now don't go crazy, too thick and your model risks failing during the print. And also, once you've hollowed out the interior, don't hollow out the thick walls because this can also lead to warping. I continue on with the design process and begin the detailing of the structure. And this gets me to my next tip. Make raised edges slightly over exaggerated. Things like the roof line and trim in this case are significantly pronounced and this makes painting a whole lot easier. It may not be exactly to scale, but you gotta remember that we're also doing really something that's supposed to represent and not actual scale because a lot of things, if we modeled them actually to scale, we would not be able to see them on our models. Once we are done, we can download our model as an STL file and we can put it into our slicer. Now a slicer is a program that preps our model for print by slicing it up into tiny little layers that the printer will recognize. And it also makes the file format that the printer will recognize. In this case, I'm using Cheetubox and I have a link for it. It's totally free in the description below. Now this process leads me to my fourth tip which is to tilt your models. Tilting your models makes it easier to print. Yes, you need supports, but printing flat is difficult to remove and is more prone to failure during the print as well. Also during this process, you're going to be putting on supports, and that process is different depending on which slicer you use. My fifth tip though, is to use extra support on those hard corners. If a print is going to warp, and it's only going to warp in one spot, it's going to warp at the corners. This is a notorious warp spot at those sharp corners. And now we can send it off to print.
And here's the model after processing. My final tip is to use a primer on the model before you begin painting. Now I use a simple flat gray spray primer. This is what comes on my models if you've ever bought one from my Etsy store. Now to demonstrate some of the tips I've done here, including the exaggerated edges, I did some basic painting with spray paint to show you these tips in action and how they make painting easier. Also, using painter's tape on straight lines can help a ton. And here is the model, and obviously I have a lot more detailing to do, but I've got a good base to work on here. I can now use normal paints like acrylics or model paints because I have that primer and that first coat of paint. All right, so that is my in-scale fire station. I still have some tweaks on the prints. It usually takes me between five and ten prints to get something right to where I'm ready to sell it if I end up selling this building. Um, so yeah so that is the in scale fire station thank you guys so so much for watching i hope you really enjoyed these tips i want to say a big thank you to all of my patrons they are listed right here they really make what i do a lot of what i do possible through their suggestions through the conversations that we have online and all sorts of different things so i want to say a big thank you to them and you can become a patron for as little as one dollar a month thank you guys so so much for watching until next time i'm jimmy from the diy digital stay safe be kind and happy railroading hey everybody it's jimmy from the diy and digital so i realized that i am i here recording nope I've actually recorded this intro already and I realized that I said completely the wrong thing, so yay for re-recordings!